If you're looking for a great way to speed up your edits where interviews are concerned, Adobe's text-based editing is exactly what you're looking for. I've been using text-based editing for a long time in a variety of capacities, but the new update to Adobe text-based editing is something that is phenomenal. It's saving me a ton of time in my multi-cam edits, and I wanted to share with you exactly what my process looks like so that you can start implementing this in your edits and saving you a ton of time. Let's jump on in. Hey, no, welcome back, it's your boy Robert Teagarden here. And today with another video, we are talking about text-based editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. I think this is a phenomenal thing. I've been using it in a variety of ways and I wanted to show you exactly what's going on. If you're new here, welcome. I post content on filmmaking tips and the business of being a creative. So if that's something that you're into, stick around for this video. Maybe you can join us in the community a little bit longer. I started using text-based editing where I would transcribe my sequences using programs like Rev or those other transcription services, bringing those into a Google Doc with timestamps and then aligning those things with my actual edits inside of a timeline. This significantly sped up the process in edits where I had multiple interviews that I had to then put into the actual timeline of the finished edit that I had. I could just kind of scrub through because reading tends to be faster than scrubbing through the footage and watching it on my timeline. Timeline. I was really happy when I saw the beta version of text-based editing in Adobe start to pop out and we started using it and playing around with it. And since then, I started to implement it into everything that I do in my workflow where interviews are concerned. Without further ado, me yapping a whole bunch, let me show you what's going on in Premiere. You can see my exact process of what's going on here. So when I'm in Premiere, the first thing that I need to do is take the sequence that I've created, the timeline that I've created, and especially if these are multicam sequences like this one is going to be, I sync my audio and I put my camera is exactly where they need to be. From there, I'm going to go up and make a new sequence from clip, which is actually going to smash those two things together. I can right click here. I can enable my multicam footage. I'm actually going to pull back. Let's just rename this real fast for multicam. Okay, now I know what that is, but I'm going to go back into my stringer. I'm going to grab the audio here, copy, paste that because now I don't have to rely on my multicam. If you want, there's a video that I put in in terms of audio in multicam sequences making your performance slow. So I de-enable my multicam audio and I actually just put in the lav and the overhead mics that are there. From there, I go into this little area right here that says text-based editing inside of Premiere Pro. You can also get it in window and workspaces and go down into text-based editing. And if you don't see it there, you can go into edit workspaces and you can move things around here. You can actually like drag this up or down depending on where you want and it automatically kind of moves itself where it needs to be, right? I don't need to have that happen. Everything in my layout is perfect. It's the way that I want it. Uh, but that's how you do it. So I go into text-based editing here and you'll see that I have to transcribe my source clips. So I go in and I'm going to transcribe what that looks like here. It'll take just a second to make sure that everything is uh, okie dokie. Once it's finished, you can see that we come up here and it's got the entire transcription uh, of what's going on. I can go ahead and name some of these speakers if I wanted to, it becomes really helpful, but you can see now I can actually start to read through these things and make adjustments based off of where I am in the timeline. The cool thing is that if I start to click on certain words, you can see the cursor head inside my timeline, my playhead is moving around depending on where I'm clicking, all really helpful stuff. Now, what's really great about this is I can kind of follow on the timeline where my audio regions are and kind of place it at the playhead and know exactly what's happening here. And how I use this is I start to see exactly what lines I know I'm going to need to get my rough cut completed in a pretty quick amount of time. What's rad is I can start to highlight these things here and you can see on the timeline now, it's actually made an in and out point in the timeline so that I can actually start to edit and make selections in terms of how I want to use this timeline and the things that I want in this timeline. What I'm going to do here and usually what I do is I hit shift three and that's going to bring me into the timeline and I'm going to start to make cuts and selections based off of the things that I want to have in my timeline. So I'm going to hit A to select all and then command or control K makes a cut on all these things. I'm going to hit shift I hit the command A again to select all command K to make a cut. I'm going to hit my selection tool and then I'm just going to bring 
this particular section up onto the V2. And so now I know that that's going to be a select that I want to use. I can go through and as you'll see, I did this on a different timeline and start to make all of my selections. And when I'm done with this thing, what I have are all of the different areas that I know are going to be the general timeline, the rough cut of what I'm going to be using inside my sequence. When I start to read through this stuff and know that these are the types of sentences or responses to my question that I want, I can start to blaze through these things knowing that I have the general cuts that I want and I can kind of eliminate the rest of these things. Premiere actually ends up giving us a couple of interesting uh, functions here. One of these is lift, right? If I go to the top here, uh, lift is going to extract that particular section from my timeline, but leave the space in there if I want to keep that space there, right? Uh, extract is going to ripple edit those two things together. So if I know that there's going to be like this space in here, this dead space of me just asking questions, I can kind of move my playheads around, set my in out points in that area, right? This little ellipse section is going to be just kind of dead space right here. Hit extract and you'll see that it just ripple deletes that dead space in there. It's really just me asking questions to the uh, interviewee. The other awesome part about text-based editing is the search function. So I know that this little gentleman right here said something about Navy SEALs. So I can type in Navy into the search bar and it's going to tell me A, how many results there were up here, uh, and then B, drop me into the exact place where the person said that term. So now I can go and say, yep, this is exactly the section that I want. Let's just give this the entire here section here. I can go back into my timeline, make those selections and pull that thing up to V2 like I showed you in the past. It's pretty awesome stuff. The other thing too, is I can kind of look at this transcription view um, and I can see the types of things that I can leave in or take out, right? I can take out pauses. I can take out multiple speakers. I can have a minimum pause length that's in here. I can actually say what type of search settings I want, whether it's the whole word or matching capitalization, those sorts of things, all really interesting stuff. Follow active monitor is going to, like I said, move the cursor or the playhead around depending where I am in this particular area. And then I can also replace particular words and kind of tune up what the transcription services are doing. So if they're saying a word that's not easily recognizable, I can go back and replace it. And also, like I said, I can add in the speaker name so it's kind of easier for me to understand exactly what's going on. Um, and, and here again, I can replace this or add edited text and you can see that it pulls up this window right here. This becomes especially helpful if I want to take the transcription that happens and then turn it into captions afterwards. And I know that, you know, there's a punctuation error or something else that I need to be replaced. I can go here, edit that stuff, kind of tap out and then you can see create closed captions based off of what the transcription is. That's a whole different video, but it's a functionality that is useful here. Now, once I kind of go through and make the selections on this particular timeline, I'm going to go back into my workspace because now I have this whole playhead that's here. And then I go to my sequence. I go into my sequence. I duplicate that sequence so that I actually have a timeline that has all of the material that I want in here. And then I go into this copy. I name it work file. I double click on the work file to bring it up. And now I can actually go into this particular sequence and start to delete out the sections that I know I'm not going to use, but at least I have a previous sequence where all of that conversation is happening, the entire interview. So if I need to go back and pull things or search through, be like, wait, that's not the Navy SEAL one that I want. I want this particular one. I can go back and reference that source sequence that these things are coming from. So once I have this, now what I do is I have all of the clips that I want to use as a rough cut. I bring everything back down onto V1. Uh, and then I can start to use this particular timeline to construct my edit and make those camera cuts back and forth between camera one, camera two, add my B-roll, add my music, add any sound design, text motion, any of those sorts of things and complete this edit. Now, again, this is just my process. I know a lot of people like to just kind of cut out that dead space and we've done things like that in the past as well. Um, but as I kind of move through, I like to have, as you've known from this channel, this kind of Hansel and Gretel breadcrumb trail so I can go back and trace my steps in terms of what I need to do in my multi cams. 
The other thing and the final part that, that I think might be really interesting to people is I can actually go back in and start to construct, copy and paste the edit around in the way that I want to. So if I go into here, I can say, oh, I don't want this section here. I can copy it with Command C, go back up here and actually paste that section in. And it moves that entire chunk of audio and dialogue from one place to another, depending on where I want to put it into my sequence. It's a pretty awesome little tip that I use there all the time, because then again, I can just look at the reference. I don't need to scrub through my playhead or more importantly, I don't need to watch or listen to what's going on. I can simply use the text reference to know that this block of text needs to get moved up in my edit and it works and functions really well. So that right there is text based editing and my workflow. If you like the video, like the damn video. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for posting notifications. Hope you enjoyed this one. What are you guys using text-based editing for? Are you using it for captions and those sorts of things? I'd love to know exactly what your experience has been utilizing this thing or how you are going to implement it. Like I said, this one really comes in handy when there are multiple interviews being used in the same edit. It really just blazes through the time frame that you have there. So if I don't see you in the past, I'll see you in the future. Ladies and germs, this is T-Garden with another video in the can. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys next week.